Hey everybody, so I want to talk about a topic where I finally have some woke uh, intersectional credibility as far as presenting my minority viewpoint, because one of the demographics that we're going to talk about today is redheads. And guess what? I am a redhead. No, I do not dye my hair. It just appears very dark because there's a lot of it. And uh, if I pull my hair out, if I uh, hold my hair up to the light, you can start to see the actual red coming through. So it's a dark red, but it is very red. And uh, there are pictures of me as a, as a little bitty boy where I have almost bozo orange hair. It's gotten darker as I've gotten older, but yes, I do have red hair. So uh, consequently, I'm a redhead talking about the redhead experience, and that means if you disagree with me, you hate redheads. I don't know why. Um, I don't understand the, war the rules. I just take advantage of them. Anyway, so what I want to talk about is there's a recent discussion that's been going around about all of the cases of Hollywood taking redheaded comic book characters and uh, having them be portrayed by black actors when those uh, franchises are adapted for the big screen and for television. Now, to be clear, I don't, if you're not aware of what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about black actors being uh, made to portray redheaded people through a process of makeup and wigs and that sort of thing. No, I'm talking about what had been a redheaded person in the comic book becomes a black person on the screen. Why is this, and people are like, why is this happening? What's going on? So I was just looking at an article that, uh, and I'll link to it below, it lists just an extraordinarily long, exhaustive list of all of the cases where this has happened, where comic book characters, redheaded comic book characters, turn into black characters on the big screen and on the on television, on the small screen. Why is this happening? Well, I'll tell you why it's happening, and it's really not that complicated, but first I'll give you just a few examples. Again, the, their list goes on and on. These are just a few examples to show you what I'm talking about. DC's Cyclone is played by Quintessa Swindell in Black Adam. Iris West is played by Candace Patton in CW's The Flash. Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen is played by uh, Mikhail Brooks in Supergirl. DC's Starfire is played by Anna Diop in HBO Max's Titans. Okay, so why are they doing this? Well, it's because Hollywood wants to uh, eat their cake and have it too. They want to, what they do is they want to uh, portray a, uh, they want to score big woke points with the woke crowd that they keep trying to, uh, they keep trying to appeal to the woke demographic no matter how much money it costs them. But they keep trying to do this where they can, they can race swap a white character for a uh, uh, for a black uh, actor, and they can pat themselves on the back, virtue signal, get all the applause they want for people who think doing that actually makes some kind of difference in the world. But here's the thing: these redhead. Remember that a lot of these uh, comic book franchises we're talking about go back almost a hundred years or more. And these red-headed characters, either they are literally and overtly Irish within the actual narratives of the comic strips or the comic books, or their red their red hair is uh, coding for them being Irish or occupying that uh, that status within the canon of the story. And so what happens is you get characters where you get a situation where on the surface, yes. You uh, you swapped out a white person for a black person. Applause. Look at you. Look at uh, how progressive you are. But the reason they're using these characters specifically is that there is there is a a long, long, long standing history of anti Irish sentiment in the United States. The Irish have encountered extraordinary bigotry, extraordinary discrimination, uh, and. Uh, Throughout the throughout U.S. history, despite being yes technically white, uh, you may if uh, you can look up for example, there was a, a term that would be posted, an abbreviation that would be, would be posted uh, in businesses, Nina, which stood for No Irish Need Apply, that kind of thing. So a lot of these characters occupy that minority status within these stories, even when they are still yes technically white characters. So, for example, the article in, uh, in question uh, was um, 
used uh, when they listed Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, and I say that because that's the actual name of the, the comic book and the character, uh, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, uh, they used a cover from one of the uh, comic books next to an image of Mikhail Brooks playing the character in Supergirl. And I don't think they even realized uh, what, you know, how, how very poignant, how very apropos the cover they used was, but it's a, a picture of Jimmy Olsen um, preparing for some kind of um, great feat of daring do. And uh, he's say, he's he's in a he's in a dressing room preparing himself in the mirror, and he's saying, "I'll solve this case without Superman's help." And then Superman is off to one side outside the door, uh, breaking the fourth wall and being like, <clears throat> "Can you believe this guy?" You know that kind of thing. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Uh, Jimmy Olsen is yes white, but being redheaded and a, and an Irish uh, coded as an Irish character, he occupies a secondary minority marginalized status within the canon of the, the comics, and so consequently, uh, you can they it allows woke Hollywood to have their cake and eat it too. They can race swap and get applause for race swapping while still having that now black character occupy a black role with a black uh, marginalized, excuse me, mar occupy a marginalized status as a black character within the overall narrative of the story. They, uh, they still, they, they still, the woke contingent that they are trying to appeal to still has a vested interest in seeing black characters be portrayed as uh, marginalized and beaten down by the larger systemic forces of the world that they occupy. So it allows um, it allows them to have their cake and eat it too. Look, and this is a phenomenon that has come in entirely, entirely with the advent of woke culture. I am old enough to remember uh, the time before all of this woke nonsense took over when bringing a minority character in, the way you brought a minority character into a story in a positive way was to just have them be a good character and their race is an afterthought and we carry on business as usual. What am I talking about? Wesley Snipes gave us three great movies as Blade. Did anyone care that he was black? No. Spawn was one of, if not the most popular comic books of the 90s and enjoyed an impressive run as a prestige drama on HBO. There was also a movie we don't talk about. But never Nevertheless, it was a very popular franchise. Did anyone care that the main characters were black? No. On and on and on. We, um, we saw, for example, an early example of this was when Charles Schultz brought in the character Franklin into Peanuts. Did he make a big to-do about Franklin being black and encountering extraordinary marginalization or anything like that? No, he just brought in Franklin, who was a good character, a likable character, got along with all of the other kids, started showing them playing together, business as usual, we kept going. And that's not ignoring the plight of African Americans or other minorities or anything like that at all. What it is is saying, you know what, we, uh, we are showing you a world beyond, we're, we're showing you a world beyond the constant, ever-present, uh, aggravations of racism and bigotry. We're showing you what people should be to one another, which is friends and uh, friends and united as people and as characters, not avatars for each each of these highly polarized demographic groups to feel like they got a piece of the on screen pie. That's the difference because Hollywood does not care about telling good stories anymore. They do not care about. Uh, interesting ideas. All they care about is woke representation. And the problem with woke representation is it is very often, if not always, just as bigoted or more bigoted than the uh, cultural oppression that it seeks to oppose. And that so that's what this is. It's just one more example of Hollywood uh, Hollywood patting themselves on the you know what Hollywood is doing is patting themselves on the back for race swapping the characters while still having those char those now black characters occupy uh, secondary marginalized oppressed roles within the uh, systemically oppressed roles within the narrative. That's what it is, and 
I don't know what the solution for woke Hollywood to, to woke Hollywood is because it seems like there's no amount of financial loss that will ever communicate to, to woke Hollywood that this is a bad idea. They they don't care about storytelling. They don't care about uh, likable or enjoyable characters. They don't if if the if the new Velma series is any indication, they don't care how much just how painfully and agonizingly awful and grating and annoying and tedious the characters are, so long as they can check off all of the boxes. So that's what this is. That's why it's happening. It's just using uh, it, it's just using Irish marginalization to keep black characters in marginalized roles while patting themselves on the black uh, patting themselves on the back for swapping out white for black. Like I said, I don't know what the solution is, but I, I certainly know why they're doing it.